the show. After their second ass whooping by Barack Obama, GOP leaders held a post-mortem and decided maybe they should try and make their party more ethnically diverse than a Celine Dion concert in Ogden, Utah. <laughs> Unfortunately, no one's making that harder than the orange supremacist at the top of the ticket. After a solid year of questioning the morality of Latinos, Trump last week decided to use their murders to question the morality of Muslims. We have to maybe check Respectfully, the mosques. Well, there's just no papers. There are no papers. We're having the blood sucked out of us. We're allowing people into our country that don't deserve to be in our country. It's a temporary ban, in particular, for certain people. They come into our country, they want to take it over. Now, look at what's happening in Germany. Oh, Jesus. I think you're showing us what happened in Germany. <laughs> Let me see now. Um, paper. Blood-sucking, undeserving people, ban... Oh, dang, if only he'd said purity, I would have won Gestapo bingo. <laughs> the prize is a Vermeer, but you have to keep it in your basement. Now, while others were tweeting condolences after Orlando, Donald was trying to build a wall out of capital letters. He didn't just get excited and squirt that phrase out. It's been a theme. We will put America first. America first will be the major and overriding theme of my administration. Ugh, that's even worse than if the overriding theme of your administration had just been tits. <laughs> Trump isn't the first American celebrity to stoke isolationist paranoia and fascist leanings with that particular phrase. Charles Lindbergh belonged to the America First movement for a very particular reason. He had become quite friendly with the Third Reich. Uh, he liked what he called Germany's organized vitality. He also got himself a Nazi aviation medal, which was presented to him by Hermann Goering himself. Lindbergh wrote about protecting the West from, quote, the infiltration of inferior blood. America really needs to pick better heroes. Now, could the slogan just be a coincidence because Donald only knows 17 words and two of them are America and first? <laughs> Perhaps. But I'm not so sure. He ignored the Anti-Defamation League's letter saying, ugh, again with this, and his target audience seems to be hearing the message loud and clear. Some people have told me that they, they've listened to my show the last few months and they've seen Donald Trump say exactly my speaking points, you know, in the rallies. <laughs> Well, at least we know this is one argument that won't turn into a rap battle. Now, obviously, having a nativist foghorn for a nominee is as uncomfortable for Republican Party leaders as Chris Murphy's filibuster diaper. Republicans increasingly distancing themselves uh, from their presumptive nominee, ducking, dodging, weaving, getting away from reporters in any way they can so they don't have to respond uh, to Donald Trump's latest rounds of comments. Oh, stop exaggerating. No one is literally dodging and weaving. Oh, my God. <laughs> Does Daryl Issa teach parkour classes? Because I think some of his fellow Republicans might want to sign up. Politico reports Majority Whip John Cornyn is done talking about Trump until after the election, nearly five months away. I'm not going to be commenting on the presidential candidate today. As Senator Pat Toomey of Pennsylvania was asked about Trump's speech, he stepped onto an elevator. I didn't follow it closely, he said. Then the elevator doors closed. No! Hold the door! Hold the door! Hold the door! Look, guys, you need to talk about Kevin. You can't just give him the silent treatment for five months and hope he doesn't ruin your popularity. This isn't junior high school. Besides, you know, your real problem isn't one Donald. It's 13 million Donald voters. Trump would like us to believe he brought those people to the party, but as usual, he's wrong. They were already there. They just weren't having fun. To see how it came to this, let's quickly review the history of modern American racism. As Republicans never tire of reminding us, the Democrats were super racist for a long time. Hell, Harry Truman was elected on an anti-Semitic platform. <laughs> but after Lyndon Johnson signed the Civil Rights Act in 1964 and the Voting Rights Act in 1965, the solid South's solid white bigots abandoned the Democratic Party and were welcomed with open, sweaty arms by Richard Nixon's campaign. Hashtag Southern Strategy. Now, I am not saying all racists are Republican or that all Republicans are racist. They are absolutely not. I am saying that for half a century, the GOP, in order to 
win elections has relied on an uneasy coalition of two opposing interests. <laughs> Think of the modern GOP as a bunch of smart entrepreneurs and small businessmen who entered into an ill-advised partnership with white supremacists for the purposes of expanding their business. But as time went on, the racist faction became harder to control, eventually overtaking the moderate wing, which got killed, and then somehow came back as Lyndon Johnson on HBO and signed the Civil Rights Act all over again. Look, Trump isn't desecrating the Republican Party. He's just peeling back the glossy exterior to reveal the hideous symbiont that's been lurking there for decades. So, GOP, the time has come to decide. Do you still want that beast living in your house or not? Because until you choose once and for all to toss it out and fumigate, you will never get the fun people to come over. <laughs> we'll be right back.